This video shows you how to create your high titer lysate. We began by adding 10 milliliters of phage buffer to a petri dish that created a web from your isolated phage. In the video, you'll watch as the student flips that phage buffer into the lid of the petri dish. Now watch as the student collects what we call your lysate. This was phage buffer that was sitting on top of infected smeg. This phage buffer now contains lots of plaque forming units. First, we suck up the phage buffer into a syringe. This is a five milliliter syringe. The student takes the first five milliliters. She then screws the syringe into a 0.22 micron filter. This filter filters out everything, leaving behind the bacteria, but letting the plaque forming units through the filter. The plaque forming units are now being collected as lysate into the sterile centrifuge tube. Remember, we started with 10 milliliters of phage buffer, but we have a 5 milliliter syringe. So, the student removed the filter and sucks up the rest of her phage buffer. She was aseptic with the filter, putting it back in its sterile container, so she reattaches the same filter and puts the rest of her lysate into her conical tube, working in her aseptic field. Next, we need to characterize your lysate. We want to know how many plaque forming units are in a milliliter of your lysate we can create a spot plate. On this spot plate, you can see the grids are marked for each dilution of your titer. You start with 10 to the minus zero and work your way through to more and more diluted solutions. Here you'll watch as the student takes a drop of one of her dilutions and places it onto the appropriately marked spot plate. In a few days, plaques will form in each of the grids. Some of those grids will have countable numbers of plaques. Those are the dilutions the student is interested in learning more about. Once the student knows what dilutions to work with, she can begin to infect some smeg and plate out those dilutions and count the number of plaques that are formed. This is called titering. Here you watch as the student uses her selected dilutions and infects the smeg. Remember, those culture tubes with the smeg can be tricky to open. She puts a drop of the dilution in aseptically. Then she's going to make sure that that dilution of plaque forming units in the phage buffer, since that's what your lysate is, gets into the smeg. Your lysate needs to sit with the smeg for at least 15 minutes. A little bit longer would be good. Once your smeg has been thoroughly infected by your lysate, we're going to create bacterial lawns with that infected smeg. You're going to take 4.5 milliliters of top auger and mix it with your half milliliter cultures of smeg. Notice how this student is working aseptically with her serological pipette. She has her top auger. Now she's putting her top auger into the culture tube with her smeg. She's gonna mix thoroughly and she'll pour this top auger right onto her labeled Petri dish. She's also careful not to put her serological pipette onto the bench top, but instead to put it back in the wrapper. Notice how she mixes to make sure the bacteria and top agar are well mixed. And then in her aseptic field, pours that top agar onto the petri dish. Here we'll watch another student do the same thing, but this student prefers to apply the top agar by using her serological pipette. Again, she's working aseptically. She has a trash can right down next to her. She struggles a bit to get her top agar lid open. It's good to loosen those lids before you start, but she'll get it open and handle it aseptically. She gets her top auger out with her serological pipette. Remember, she's using the S button on her red pipette bulb. This sucks the top auger into the pipette. Now she's going to put that top auger into one of her infected smeg culture tubes. And in this case, she'll suck all of this solution back up into her serological pipette. This is that mixing process that makes sure that her bacterial lawn will be even. Now she can use the pipette to apply the top auger to her labeled Petri dish. Again, this is the same technique we saw earlier. This student prefers to use the pipette. In this video, we showed you how to collect and filter your lysate. We also showed you two ways to begin to collect the titer of your lysate. You can set up a spot plate or you can plate out the full dilution series using bacterial lawns.